let's look at uh, the rules of angles uh, on a parallel lines. So now these two lines are parallel. So this is line L. So this is line L and this is line M. And this is the transversal T. So these lines are parallel. So let's show this by notation. This is the notation for parallel lines. Now as they are parallel, what are parallel lines? Parallel lines are lines which do not intersect each other. So you got eight angles here. So let's name this. So this is say angle one. This is angle two. Angle three. Angle four. So let's look at the rules of angle one, two, three, four. So you should know angle one plus angle two should add up to how many degrees? The angles on a straight line, so that should be 180. Okay, so what can you say about angle one and angle three? Well, they also add up because the angles on a straight line, so that's also 180. What can you say about 3 and 4? Well, that's also 180. You can say angle 3 plus angle 4 is also 180 because the angle is on the straight line. And angle 2 plus angle 4 is also 180. So they're all angles on a straight line. Now, you may have learned in your primary school a quarter turn is 90 degree. A half turn is 180. So Angles on a straight line is basically a half turn. So if you so if you draw a half turn, so this is half turn. A half turn is 180. Okay, so if you go from year to year, this is also a half turn. So if you go from year to year, this is also a half turn. So basically a half turn is 180 degree. So what would be a full turn? Well a full turn is 360 degree. So if you go a full turn, or there are 360, one full turn, so this is one thing that you need to remember, or you should be knowing, one full turn, one full turn is 360 degree. One full turn is 360 degree, so if you want to show that, so if you start from this point, and if you go a full circle, this is 360 degree. Okay, so how can you use that? So if you add angle 1, angle 2, angle 3, and angle 4, angle 1 plus angle 2, plus angle 3, plus angle 4, is equal to, plus angle 4 is going to be a full turn, which is 360 degree. So as we saw, uh, the full turn is 360 degree and half turn is 180 degree. Now from this you can also see, so let's use that to make up an example. It's always good to make up an example. So let's say angle 1 is say 50 degrees. Angle 1 is 50 degrees. So how can you find angle 2? Well angle 1 and angle 2 adds up to 180 because that's a half turn so that has to be 130 degrees because this plus this is 180. Angle 3, angle 2 and 3 is again one half turn. So that will be, so this is 130. So if this is 130, this has to be 50. This is 50 degrees, angle 3 is 50. And again angle 4 would be 130 degree. And if we add all the 4, you can see this is, that's going to be 360. This is 180. And this is also 180. So you have, we have come up with a new rule. So angle 2 and angle 4 are equal. Angle 2 is equal to angle 4. In the same way angle 3 is equal to angle 1. They are called vertically opposite angles. I'll call it in short VO angles are equal. So this is how you can write it in short. Vertically opposite angles are equal. So now, now we're going to look at angles formed, uh, the relation between the angles formed by a transversal and a pair of parallel lines. 
So the first rule or the first thing that you can say about is angles called corresponding angles. Corresponding angles. So if you know one rule, you can get the other rule. Corresponding angles. Now corresponding angles are angles which are on the same side of the transversal. One is, it has to be on the same side. If one is above, the other is below. So angle 1 and angle phi is one pair. Angle 1 is outside the parallel lines and angle phi is inside. They're both on the same side of the transversal. And we, you can also understand visually the measure of angle 1 would be equal to the measure of angle phi because they are on the parallel on the same side and they are parallel so th this these angles this angle is formed by transversal t on line l and angle phi is the angle again formed by transversal t on line m and line l and m are parallel so angle 1 the measure of angle 1 should be the equal to the measure of angle 2 so if you look at the second pair, angle 2 should be equal to which angle? You can pause this video and try to answer. Angle 2 should be equal, if you just use your common sense, angle 2 should be equal to angle 6. Angle 3 should be equal to angle 8. And angle 4 should be equal to angle 7. So this is the rule. So how do you write the rule? This is in short you write corresponding angles, corresponding angles, parallel lines, parallel lines equal. So what does this mean? In If you want to make a sentence, what does this mean? Corresponding angles on parallel lines are equal. Let me say it again. Corresponding angles on parallel lines are equal. So let's understand this rule. So let's take an example. Say angle 1 is say 50 degrees. Okay. So angle 1 is 50. So angle 5 would also be 50. So now if you know angle 1 and angle 5, you can find all the other angles. So we know angle 2 would be 130. Angle 4 would be 130 because they are vertically opposite angles. Angle 3 should be 50. You can also look at different rules, angles on a straight line. So angle 6 is going to be how much? If this is 50, this has to be 130. And if this is 130, this has to be 50. And if this is 50, this is going to be 170. The next pair of uh, lines are called alternate angles. Alternate angles. This is how you write angles in short. Alternate angles are also called Z angles. Now if you look in Z, you got two angles at Z. So let me show the Z in this diagram. So this is this is one Z. Uh, I can draw that better. Okay, so let me erase this. So this is one Z. Let me make it thicker so that this is one Z. And this is the other Z. So what are the angles formed at the two Z's? Okay, so here you can say angle 4 and angle 6. Angle 4 and angle 6 is one pair. And what's the other pair? Angle 3 and angle 5. Angle 3 and angle 5. And what can you say about the angles? They are equal. Angle 4 is 130. Angle 6 is also 130. So they are equal. And angle 3 is equal to angle 5. And finally, let's look at corresponding angles. Sorry, co-interior angles. Co 
interior angles. The word itself is clear. Co-interior angles are angles inside the parallel lines and co stands for on the same side. So co-interior angles are angle 4 and angle 5 is one pair of co-interior angles. 4 and 5 are inside the parallel lines and they are on the same side. The other pair is angle 3 and angle 6. What can you say about angle 4 and angle 5? Angle 4 plus angle 5 adds up to 180. So if you add angle 4 plus angle 5, 130 plus 50 is 180. Okay, and angle 3 plus angle 6 is also 180. So I forgot to explain the rule. The alternate angle rules can be written like this. Alternate angles parallel lines are parallel lines are equal and for this we write like this co interior angles so co interior angles this is how you write the rule co interior angles parallel lines are supplementary okay or you can write adds to 180 adds to 180 degree or you can also say they add up to or they are supplementary angles and supplementary angles are angles which add up to 180 degree.